Good morning, everyone. And I turned it off. Oh, now it's okay. Good morning. Welcome to everyone that's here today in house and that's watching online. You are welcome, and we're so glad to have you. Just a couple of announcements. Tuesday, October 29th, our seniors' lunch. A little excitement about that. <laughs> There's a sign up sheet at the info desk, so please uh, sign up, and we're going to follow with Tim Singh. If you're 65 plus, you're welcome. If you're under 65, some people sneak in. That's all right. This Saturday, fall back. <laughs> so don't forget to turn your clocks back Saturday night before you go to bed, because you'll end up at church at the wrong time, and that's not fun, and ask me because I've done it. So if uh, we look at our calendar, um, there's lots of great things in there. There's calendars at the info desk, so make sure you pick one up. Uh, we've got a men's prayer breakfast. We've got encouraging sisters. We've got a life group starting for women. There's, women, there's lots and lots to look at. Uh, something, um, a request. We have a new family at church. They are not here right yet, but they're on their way. Ola, Charity, and Elizabeth. They are from Nigeria. They've just immigrated here and, and are in Woodstock. They... Uh, are living in an Airbnb. They are moving to an apartment November 1st. And so if you are available on November 1st, come to me and I can give you the details. That's Friday. And they are looking for furniture. So if you have a bed or a table and chairs or anything like that, that you have been in your way and you've been tripping over, like my house, please come to me and we'd like to donate that to them and just bless them and welcome them to Wood Canada and welcome them to into Bethel because we are a welcoming church and we are a church that loves newcomers and loves people of different ethnicities so we want to just make them feel loved. Um, so it's shoebox time. So out in the foyer you will see our shoe boxes that are all set up and they're ready to go. There is uh, information with them and we need these all filled out. It needs to be checked off. Is it a boy or a girl? We need their age, all the information is there. Our dates are November 17th to the 20th. That's 20th being the absolute cutoff date that we need them back at the church. Now, Samaritan's Purse is amazing, and I love to share this story because when I was in India, we had people that uh, worked with Samaritan's Purse and got shoe boxes, and they would distribute them to different churches. And they told us a story, a couple, a few stories about shoe boxes. And one of them was about a woman in their church whose daughter had come to them and said, I want a pair of high-heeled shoes for Christmas. And the mom said, how can I afford a pair of high-heeled shoes? That's impossible. You have to understand, that would be impossible there. And she said, there's no way I could afford to buy that for my daughter. And where am I going to find them? So the pastor's wife said, the little girl came up and got her box, and she, started, she took it back, and she said, I looked and realized, oh, I gave her the wrong size. It was for a different age child. And she said, I started to go back to her, and by the time I got back to her, she sat down. She opened up the box, and guess what was inside? <laughs> a pair of high heel shoes that fit her to a T. <laughs> so God uses these boxes in amazing, amazing ways. So on your way out, grab one. We have lots. Make sure you have them in by the 20th. Uh, I think that's all of our announcements this morning. Turn it back over to Pastor Ron. Praise the Lord, everyone. Come on, give the Lord a shout because he is so good. You know, uh, I am so glad for our Filipino family. They're going to come. But what I was intrigued with was as we got to know them and we started uh, uh, putting out these uh, shoe boxes a number of years ago, some of them, a few of them, were recipients of the shoe box. So I just think that. And they're going to help us. They're going to lead us in our worship uh, this morning. And by the way, they, they do a service 
every Friday night at 6.30. Now, you know what? They let me in the door. And if they let me in the door, they'll let you in the door. And if there are times that when they, when they speak their own uh, language, which they sometimes do, they'll even give you an interpreter so you don't miss much. And I have to tell you, I don't miss much. Because most of it is in English. These words on the screen are in English. There is the odd time. I told them one day I'm going to speak Filipino. You know, uh, in Psalm 34, the psalmist writes, I will praise the Lord. Some translations use the word, I will bless the Lord. And it uses a term. It says, I will bless or praise the Lord at all times. That tells me that we ought to be praising, worshiping the Lord a lot more than Sunday mornings or Friday night or Tuesday morning or Tuesday evening when the young people get together. By the way, if you've got young people that would enjoy the company of young people, it's at 6.30, I believe, uh, on Tuesday nights. So you can avail yourself of those opportunities. But every day, turn to your neighbor and say every day, you ought to worship the Lord. Every day, you ought to worship the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. If you feel down in the dumps, one, day, one morning when... When you get up on the wrong side of the bed, the best thing you can do is begin to praise and worship the Lord. That'll take care of all the stuff when you turn your eyes upon Jesus and you look full in his wonderful face. I'm not preaching right now. I'm only reading the scripture. I will boast only in the Lord that all who are helpless take heart. Come! Let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. Boy, I think that's awesome. That no matter where we come from, what we look like, you know, we can together worship the Lord. Come, let us tell of the, of the Lord's greatness. And it goes on to say, it says, I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me, and he freed me from all my fear. There is nothing like worshiping and praising the Lord. Get your eyes focused on him, no matter what you've uh, come, come in with. And we'll be uh, sharing a little bit more from this scripture, also continuing uh, in the battle of the kingdom, part three. I'm looking forward to the word, but I'm looking forward to what God will do in our hearts as we praise and worship. Come, please, and uh, make yourselves ready. They even invited me to play the keyboard with them, and uh, I'll see if I can stay with them. God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all. Uh, it's been a long time that I haven't stood here, and I'm blessed. And I'm glad that I'm here today. Amen? So let's praise God this morning with gladness and joy in our heart. Let's worship God. Come. Now is the time to worship. May I, may I invite you to stand up if you are able? Thank you. Enjoy the presence of the Lord today. Amen.
is forever and ever. Your love never changes. Your love is endless love. We thank you, God, for your love. Let's continue to worship our God. The Bible said, let everything that has read praise the, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, we praise you and we want our lives to praise you, Jesus. There's joy in your presence. There's power. There's peace in your presence, Lord. Lord, you are the air that we breathe, oh God. You are our daily bread. This morning, let God mold us, make us, transform us from glory to glory.
truly that you move on this life, that we need in our lives, oh God. We need you, Lord. We need you,
where you have a need in your family and you say, I need you, Lord, to heal me, to touch me, to remove the cares. And actually the Lord says, cast all your care on him because he cares for you. We've got people with tags that are, uh, they can go into the aisles or even at the back. And you just say, I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. I need you, I need you more than yesterday. I need you more.
the name of the Lord you know if someone has a word I didn't even get the word out I'm a little older than a kid. Grew up in the 50s. In the 50s, the rule. Problem, you could lose your job. We didn't lock cars or houses. And if I did something wrong out in the street in the neighborhood, I didn't have to wait to get home to get shot by somebody else. Neighbor may get me aside. Hey, boy, you can't do that. We're in a different world today. And when you look at prophecy in Scripture, it, it indicates that we're probably days or There's all kinds of stuff pounding on all the time right here. Who's got one of these in here? Everyone. Might be one or two, but everyone has one. And it's a constant influx of negativity, garbage. But most of all, it's an indicator of the state of the world that we live in today. Is one that is adverse to the things of God. It's one that when you go on there, start talking about things that are positive, usually some argue with the word. It is. We are a family, and we are an organization. That we can just look at things around us factually and rejoice in the fact that Jesus Christ. But, but, Proverbs talks about a man who would go by himself and speak. The Bible says that we are not. we get together and we lift up each other with hymns, songs, spiritual songs. So as we look at the things, the scriptures that are coming to pass around us and it looks like the end is near, look up for your redemption. We have a God who loves us more than we can ever imagine. Bible says that he is our banner. He is our banner means that he will fight our battle. It says he will lift his mighty right arm up against you. He says, fear not for I am, be not dismayed, I am. He 
we've done the praise and worship. That was awesome. The presence of God is in this place. Here's a song. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. He wants the best for each one of us in here. And those online. He wants the best for us in the family of God. But we have to commit to him in salvation. We need to be born again part of that family. We need to meditate on that word day and night. The word says there must be and have to. Most of all, do not forsake the assembling yourselves together. Not only in this place, in your homes, in your business, in your place of work, in Tim Horton, if you're out together, assemble together, encourage each other, lift one another up, be accountable to someone. Find someone in your life, in your sphere of influence, that you can be accountable to. Have regular conversations phone once a week. Invite them over to dinner. Go to their place. Go out and fish. Go out and snowmobile. Go out and do whatever together. But we are in a time that we can be excited. The presence of God is mighty powerful. We get together. This morning, praise the milk. That was awesome. Filipinos, oh, they have hearts. We just love you guys so much. So sure appreciate you. But today, be encouraged. Be lifted up. If there's anything holding you back, if there's sin in your life that you need to, just right now, just ask the Holy Spirit, is there anything holding me back from being filled with your joy? Being filled with the assurance of you are God and you love me and you will take care of me every area of my life. Spirit, soul, and body. That's everything. That's finances. That's relationship. That's our emotion. Our psychological part of us. Every part of us. Be encouraged today. God is calling us to closer, closer relationship. He will work. He will do a good work. Praise the Lord. Come, let us tell of the greatness of the Lord's greatness. Come, let us tell 
of the Lord's greatness. We read it earlier. That is Psalm 34. You know, I'm just not putting time, but I if I don't get through my message, it's okay. But if you have a something you would like to thank the Lord for, praise the Lord for, I'm just going to ask you to stand up and come to the platform and tell us. Come tell us of the Lord's greatness. Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, maybe I'll hold this to help you. I had the privilege of being in the Bible service two nights. We have seen, we have seen deaf ears. We have seen, we have seen that cancer, you name it, heal. There's no different. The God of creation, the God of salvation, the God is here. He can do the exact same thing. We just have to trust him. But the thing is, so many times we think, I'm not. He wouldn't do that for me. But he did it for people. There were people with situations that were, would break. But he healed them. He healed them in their lives. And he's the same God, whether he's in Bolton with an evangelist, with this brother right here, he's God. And I think as I was talking with Linda, he is pouring out his spirit. And that includes one of us. And so if we do have needs, we can come to him. He can heal, he can save, he can deliver, he can do anything. And it's not him. And he alone gets the glory. But I was privileged because I haven't been in service. Like just the person that to me uh, with cancer, a person was healed. I mean, it was amazing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so I'm just sharing what I what I experienced. Whoa, I guess Lena, like that. But what I was saying was, God was there. He's the same. And he can do it. And I was so privileged because I'm not used to it. But it's true. Real, and we're going to see more and more and more and more and more. A lady that comes here, we pray. She heard every word. I mean, he's, and that's what he did. So I'm just giving him glory. This was part of it. It's exciting because he's real, and I praise him for. I'm good. Come on. When I think about the miracles of God, I think of what Jesus Christ, you know, opening the blind eyes. But the miracle of Jesus Christ is, to me, is what he's brought me from every day of my life. Without the risk of standing sanctimony or self-righteous, but I, I was one that never liked the party crowd. I was one that never liked beer, smoking I was never that good at it anyway, so anyway, but nonetheless, Jesus Christ has brought me personal times in my life. 
And there was times when my ego or whatever said, well, okay, I made it through that. I, 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 I yeah, I mean, I always was one, I guess, I don't know, that could always figure things out or always, you know, no matter what the dilemma was, I'd always sort of give it a day and give it time to, but it wasn't me. That wasn't me at all. Jesus Christ. It was never, ever, ever me. And the friend that he has been to me has been the miracle in my life. Thank him enough. I don't know how we could. There's no way we could. When Gary talked about assembling ourselves together on Wednesday night at prayer meet, he talked about that. And to me, that not only means here, that means picking up the phone and seeing how are you doing, you know, one on one or two or three or whatever. It doesn't necessarily it means coming to church, but it means through the week too, and it means being a family. There's no better people in the family of God. Young people, there is nothing out there in the world, absolutely nothing but hurt and abuse. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You all ready? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't right. I was going to tell you, usually Shannon does this. And I said, if Shannon does this, then I'm coming up, and here I am, and you're doing it. What's wrong with this? <laughs> The girls won this time. <laughs> for some time now, I've been praying for a job that would go along with this job at the church, which I love. And I've been waiting patiently, but mostly impatiently, for an answer. And I just would go through times where I'd, I need a job. I just, God would say, just wait, wait wait. And um, so I'd been waiting. And uh, a, not this last Wednesday, a week before Wednesday, I, I had applied for, and I was accepted into work for a company, and everything was a go, and I just felt so wrong about it. I felt it wasn't what I wanted to do, but yet financially I knew I had to get started on something, and there was just like this sandpaper in my spirit. And I... I got a call on this Wednesday from a, a place that I had worked before in the past, but I couldn't work for it anymore. I had given it up because I had to work on Sundays, and I said, I can't do that anymore. And I had given it up. And I got a call, and I was able to talk to them, which was a miracle. And then they all said, can, would you consider coming back? And I said, listen, I work Tuesdays and Thursdays at church. I have to be there on Sunday mornings. They said, that's fine. We'll work around that. So I got I went back I'm going I went back to work for them starting last week. And later in the day on that same day, I got a call uh, from the school, the school system I had applied also for a job there, which I kind of half forgot about, but I'm going to be working uh, three hours, just three hours a week uh, as an English tutor as well. So I have two new jobs. plus this job which I haven't gone anywhere because I'm still your thorn in your side. Um, but God is the God of provision. That's what I, when, uh, when I took Ola and his wife back for the first time, back to their uh, 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 hotel room, because they were living in a hotel room, three people in one hotel room with all their stuff and so on, and I'm telling his testimony. Maybe he'll, he'll want me to tell it, but I told him, I said, God is a God of provision. That's the word for you. And that was the word. It's been the word for me. and That's the word for all of us. It's God is a God of provision. And whatever you're waiting for, or looking for, or asking for, God will provide. It. And he will provide it greatly and more above. Thank you, Don. I'm glad you came up. Someone else. Thank you, Jesus. I, uh, I must be told this about 
this experience in Jesus Christ. And I'm first of all, I thank God for providing this opportunity to connect with my Remember on the harvest dinner that uh, multicultural host the harvest dinner, and before I go, I was praying. I was praying that Lord bring people to my attention. So that particular evening, God bring all, almost all the friends in the town, to my table. It's not that I will take initiative to meet them, but um, through one of the one of the friends, bring all of them almost that evening. So as I connect with them, we feel that closeness. We felt like a family. And so after that night, I was just, I was just wondering, I say, Lord, what's your plan for my friends? And what's your plan for us in this town? We don't have a lot of Chinese friends in this town. We probably total, probably will be includes kids, will be, I would say, 10 of them for now. Or, I think maybe more than 10, maybe a uh, maximum 12. I guess if we all get it together, that I know of. Um, but uh, I'm glad because I always ponder on my heart, like uh, how can I become a blessing to them? Like uh, how can I let them know that the Lord I know also they connect to them, they can have that blessing as well. And so um, we got to meet mother a few times and then we express the um, life in here and also we have fun together to swim together and eat together. And uh, we actually was, uh, uh, they actually was expressed that uh, they're actually curious about like a uh, get to know about the Bible. So what I'm about to say is why I experienced the Lord's presence. So yesterday morning, when I woke up, I thought about, I have this two thought. I said, how I can get the gospel to God in the same version so I can have that everyone they have a copy of on paper. So they not, they did not ask for a paper copy, but they will just say, just just copy the English verse and Chinese verse on the group so we will know what we're going to read. But I thought it would be nice to have them a copy, a paper copy of for each of them. So I thought about Pastor Raw, I thought about other pastors that I know that he has given me the Gospel John. And then, but at that, yesterday morning I was filled with joy. And what I did the morning, I would just make a song in my mind and singing, but without a fee. But I was so happy. I talked to myself and I thought I talking to the law. And I say, Law, I'm about to do this chore, this chore, and I'm gonna after this, I'm gonna go to Harvest House yourself. <laughs> and then I, I done everything and then I say, oh, it's time to go. So when I go, I say, um, I'm going to drop off on my workplace because I forgot my phone on my workplace, but I'm not going to call anyone if the door not open. I cannot get in. I have to wait one day to get my phone. But <laughs> praise the Lord, when I get to the harvest yard sale, I saw my first colleague. I saw my colleague, and she already finished shopping. <laughs> You're about to pay. And I said, hey, uh, did you bring the key for the school? And she said, I don't usually do that, but I do. So follow me to my car. <laughs> and before I came, before I get to the harvest uh, yard sale, I also talked to the Lord. I said, I'm going to bring this gospel kill. I'm going to bring this gospel chat. So if you want me to pass out this gospel chat to someone, so draw them to my attention. So I give it to my colleagues. I say, this morning, this this happened. I talked to the I pray to the Lord. And this gospel chat is for you. Making sure you read it. So I just left on that. And then when I go back to it, I say, I say to all the ladies on the, on the phone, I say, I actually don't really have anything that I need. But I like to come into your cell just for fun. <laughs> As I turn and go into trying to check something, just a couple steps, I saw this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Bibles lay on the desk. And I stabbed them all together. And that's why I turned to back to back to the to the to the uh, checkout. I say, 
that's what I'm gonna buy. I bought all this Bible. How much? And the lady said, we don't charge for God's words. So those are gifts. And I said, praise the Lord. It's like, and I start to get excited. I said, it feels like the Lord knows what we need. And I, I felt deeply that the Lord know, the Lord love my Chinese friend. Although they might did not know him personal yet, but I felt like a food dad like he knows, like what I has I has experienced before I know him, he has known me. And before I love him, he hasn't loved me. So I was excited and I cannot I cannot uh, stop to share what God has done and how God faithfully provides. So guess what? I got seven, includes the 10 years old and 14 years old, and I got seven Bible. And at first, I gave them report. I even shared with my Chinese friend. I said, you know what happened today? This is this happened. And then I said, I got eight Bible study together. In one minute, I count my ball. <laughs> I said, only seven. I, I, I miscounted it's seven. And then I'm thinking about, thinking about all the number of like adult and children is seven. So. It makes me all encouraging because seven, it is a perfect number in the Bible, right? So, amen for that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Is there another? Well, you have heard me say that Jesus said, my house will be called a house of prayer. And I also believe that this ought to be a place of practice, telling our story, giving thanks to the Lord. You know, we don't have a service to put on a show. People that watch us online, they don't see some of the things that go on, but we do appreciate the fact that they're watching. You know, we read, Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness, and let us exalt his name together. I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me, freed me from all my fear. Those who look to him for help, will be radiant with glory. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. In my desperation, the psalm said, I prayed. And the Lord listened. He saved me from all my trouble. For the angel of the Lord is a guard he surrounds and defends all who fear him. Then it said in verse 8, taste and see. Now look at your neighbor and say, taste and see that the Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Now do you know that there are many people you know that they have not tasted or they have not seen that the Lord is good. We have these flags up for a purpose. It's so that when we come into the house of the Lord, we can look around and see the flags. I'm going to ask you to get together the two or three, and I want you to pray together for the salvation of people in a specific you. When you're in your groups, you will agree on a country that you are going to believe God for. And you're going to take, I'm going to give you five minutes. At least five minutes. Now, here's how this works. When you are in groups of two or three, Please just don't sit by yourself. The Bible says if any two agree, I want to do the, the utmost I can to honor the word of the Lord. You say, Pastor, I feel uncomfortable. Well, so do I. 
There are areas that we venture in that I feel uncomfortable. But I still am required to be obedient. And I believe that it's important for us for this to be a place of prayer. Now, in order to facilitate every, you say, Pastor, this is a hard task you're asking me. Well, how come you've only given us five minutes? Well, it's like this. When you pray, you don't have to pray long prayers. You understand what Jesus did so often when he, somebody came to him? He didn't do a great big monologue of prayer. He prayed very simply. He told people, go, be healed, stand up. So that gave me encouragement. You know, that in our prayers, we don't have to preach when we pray. We can simply, very simply, it says, taste, see that the Lord is, taste, see that the Lord is, it says, I prayed to the Lord, he answered me and freed me. It's that simple. So, you can pray something like, Lord, let's take the United States. We, do, we all know that there's not many heathen in the U.S. I'm being But I can pray, Lord, it is your will that all be saved. I'm calling on your power. That your power come on the United States. That even during election time, people, it's that simple. In Jesus' name. Okay, let's get her done. Praise the Lord. Get up. So, 
か。Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise, praise, praise. I'll give you a little bit to finish up. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus said, Heal the sick. Heal the sick. That's what the word We've been teaching you and, and, uh, that the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. But the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. I intended today to continue to talk about the kingdom of God. I'm just going to give you a few scriptures that I'm going to leave with you to help you understand where we're going with you. This is a house of prayer. Jesus said, heal the sick and say to them. Jesus is telling the disciples to do this. And if you are a follower of Jesus, then you of necessity, because of what Jesus has done for you, you have the wonderful privilege of working for the Lord. Regardless of what your uh, job is in this world, you are not really of this world, for this world is not your home. You're passing through. Tell your neighbor, I'm just passing through. So Jesus said to them, heal the sick. Thank you for those that gave testimony of the wonderful acts of the Lord. He said, the Lord says, heal the sick and tell them the kingdom of God is near you now. Whew, that's big. Praise the Lord. And whenever the presence of God is, there the kingdom of God is. Praise the Lord. And, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, it says, For the kingdom of God is not just talk. <laughs> the kingdom of God is not just talk. It is living by the God's power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can be a partaker of walking in the power of God. Whether you're watching online, I'm sorry you didn't get to see what was going on in here. We don't, we don't turn our cameras to show you necessarily what God is doing, but it's sure wonderful to hear the prayers of God's people. It does my heart good. And uh, I hope that this is, will be a, a continued thing in your home every day that you'll pray for one of these countries here. The kingdom of God is not just talk. 
So you can talk about all you want about how nice it is to be a Christian and that you're safe from sin and that, and that you have a wonderful God. Well, tell somebody else. Prove you are in the kingdom. Okay, that went over like a lead balloon. But I'm telling you, you are, if you are in the kingdom of God, everyone has a responsibility to tell somebody about Jesus. And it's, you don't have to be like somebody else. You don't have to tell it like anybody else. All you can do, the best thing to do is just tell your own story. Praise the Lord. It's not just talk, but it is the living by God's power. Jesus tells, told Nicodemus, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Later on, he said, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of the Spirit. I'll tell you, being born again is the most wonderful, most, most wonderful thing on the earth. And it is a demonstration that the power of God, it doesn't matter what you carry, what you do, what kind of thing. I, when I was in the prison system, but they'd say to me, Coach, you don't know what I've done. No, I don't, and I don't care. I just know that Jesus died for you, and he took care of the sin. All you've got to do is acknowledge what he has done for you and accept him as personal Lord and Savior. Coming to Jesus is that easy. Now, after saying that, there are some things that, that, uh, that, are, that are done that is to your benefit. You're, you're not just uh, stepping into this thing. Of, look at Don't ever wonder. You know what? Taste and see. You know what I do? I don't like to see. Just look at the supper table. You know what I mean? I got to sit myself right up to that table. And I got to get the fork. Uh, somebody has prepared that meal. Do you know what? I want to sink my that, that, that my teeth into that food for myself. I don't want to hear somebody else talk about how good the food is. I want to taste it myself. So we had uh, uh, one testimony telling of God's, of God's goodness, faithfulness, healing the sick with different kinds of problems. Thank you for that. But I want to enter into that which the Lord has for us. Praise the Lord. And I just don't want to see somebody else get it. I want to get it too. Praise the Lord. I want to experience the presence and the power of God for myself. Because I know, I know that uh, we, the Bible says we're to seek first the kingdom of God above all else. And he will give you everything in you need. So, I read it. Somebody might say it to me. I might hear the preacher say it. But I want to experience for, for myself. I want to experience the presence and the power and the kingdom of God for myself. Jesus said, if I am casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. When stuff begins to happen, like he said, Heal the sick and tell them the kingdom of God. So, that's about all I'm going to speak about this morning. And I'll, this part three will become part three next week. And I've been on part three for a while, and I'll stay with part three until we can get through it. Praise the Lord. Because talking about the kingdom of God is something we all need to understand not just hear it, but to live it. And you don't have to walk in this thing by yourself, but by the presence and power of God. When you're born again, you receive Holy Spirit. You do. You receive Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And then there is an experience called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, where he fills you completely. Thank you, Jesus. There is, you know, I had... I has not seen or ear has heard the things that God has laid up for you. If you'll just come to him, taste 
and see for yourself that the Lord is Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. I feel the pain of family when I come. Praise the Lord. So, I'd like them to sing, if you don't mind, a uh, brief. Because we need the fresh breath of God. And I'll tell you what, if you're desperate for God, if you're hungry and thirsty for righteousness, you can be filled. Well, you turn to your neighbor and say to them, if you're hungry, he'll fill you. Yes, he will. Praise the Lord. After we sing it, let's sing it through a couple of times, and then we're going to close in prayer together. If you have a need, okay, you still have a need. There's still stuff going on. You can come to the altar. The camera will be off. You can come to the altar and lay it at the altar, or you can go to somebody and say, pray for me. Help me to taste and see you are good. Praise the Lord. We come to you and acknowledge we need you, Lord, more than ever. In these days, I ask that in Jesus' name, you will equip us. You will equip us. It's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts that will respond to what you are working in all of our lives, that we will demonstrate and show you well. 
Let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you for the provision of daily breads for you look after all of our needs. I ask that the light of your countenance would rest on us as we go from this place. Thank you for those that are watching online. I ask, Lord, that you would work in their hearts and in their lives as well. And may your peace, the peace that surpasses understanding, let it guard their hearts and their minds. And if they are sitting in fear, let your perfect love fill. For your perfect love cast out all fear. In the name of Jesus, amen.